I say Hippodeus, so well, I've never met Hermes, you know him well, do you not? That being the case, could you simply find him by his aether? I that I could. As you know, Emmett Selk and I can discern the color of souls. By the same token, we, all, we can also see Aether quite keenly and from great distances. Ah, <gasps> baby. In uncertain times, naught but the simplest words of wisdom will suffice. That which lives is destined to die. Love leads to loss. Every beginning has an end. Every moment, every step of your descent. Cool. <laughs> Hello, yes, I am baby. Please educate me. <laughs> I smell etherites. Oh, wow, that was uh, actually really easy. Hello, sir. Huh. You are... The gremlin. Oh, they're so pretty. Uh, different. You're different too. Yes, I am. You and me. We're alike. Friends. I want to be. Wait, please. Wait. I love her. Greetings and salutations. Can you hear me? I can. Hi. Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings, and know your thoughts. <laughs> May we please be friends? Sure. <laughs> May we please be friends? Ah, I see you found him. It's Ladeus. It's been a while. Too long, I think. Oh god, it's the same voice. Too long indeed for close collaborators. On this blessed occasion, I bring not only myself, but others who long to speak with you. of the convocation. Emmett Selk at your service. Do I have the honor of addressing Hermes, chief overseer of Elpis? You do. You have traveled far for it. Given your facility's purpose, its remote location is something of a necessity. Would that I didn't have to rely upon a guide. Oh, you wound me. Have I not ever been an attentive and helpful friend? Only the most attentive and the most helpful. But moving along to more agreeable company, this one we chance to... <laughs> well, you certainly have her attention. Is she one of yours, Hermes? Her name is Meteon. It means shooting star. Hmm. If I may make an observation, her ether is terribly thin. I fear she might dissipate at any moment. Nor do I believe you've made a submission to the Bureau. I would remember such a concept if you had. I haven't, as you say. I judged it too early. She's a pet project of mine, still undergoing preliminary testing. But rest assured that I will attend in person ere long. Very well. Being an authority on flying life forms, I appreciate that you are exacting in your work. I shall look forward to your submission. If we have finished with the perfunctory chit-chat, 
I would discuss official matters. By my coming, I trust you already anticipate the subject. I have an inkling, yes. Please wait to the main building yonder. I shall join you as soon as I've returned these creatures to their homes. What's wrong, Hermes? The Nemistoma is missing. Uh oh. Hmm. I may have found it. A creature with the self-same ether as those there, nestled in the boughs of a tree outside the grounds. You're saying they can climb with their sorry excuses for limbs? The fashion has been to imbue aquatic creatures with the power of flight, ever since the words of Mitron created a sky-swimming fish. <laughs> The Ambistomas, too, can fly, if only slightly, and they could conceivably climb a tree. Whether they can come down safely, however... Excuse me. <laughs> He's got to save the baby. <laughs> I'll help, too! And what? Are we supposed to do with this lot? <laughs> May I suggest we split up? If you would be so good as to assist Hermes, Emmett Selk and I shall keep an eye on these adorable creations in the meantime. Yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> Adventurous Abstoma. <laughs> I love him. Yet though it has been safely extricated from the tree, Hermes appeared to have found himself in quite a predicament. I only... oh. Oh! <laughs> I see. The abs abstoma. Hermes saw it high up in the tree. He climbed to get it, but it jumped on him, and he slipped. Everything is under control, I trust? Uh, yes, rest assured, this is nothing new to me. I've ended up in far more compromising positions to close my work. Now for your own safety, please stand back. Hermes, are you alright? Quite alright, yes. My apologies for making you wor wor uh, worry, Medion. Both you and, uh... Autumn. A familiar, please meet me. Autumn Dawn, you are called. An intriguing name. Somehow reminiscent of a new creation. I mean, technically. Thank you for coming after me. Baby. As for you, little one, you must be more careful. <laughs> <laughs> you may be able to fly, but that doesn't mean you cannot fall and hurt yourself. Oh no! I had forgotten all the villain's fellows! Uh, uh, don't worry, my friends are out there. <laughs> Truly, what a relief. I must thank Emmett Selk and Hithlodeus when I return to them. But first, when the distraction's out of the way. As Chief Herbiceer of Elpis, permit me to welcome you to our facility. I hope you enjoy your time here. Well, we mustn't keep the others waiting. Let us return to Echnorisis. I have all the words in this exchange so far. <laughs> Oi, not now. Wait till you're a hunt. I'll be back then. Oh, greatest and most memorable of Shadowbreaker's characters. May I stay? And here is where we part ways. Aww. We will be discussing highly sensitive affairs. Only a select few may be privy to such knowledge. And that does not include someone who cannot or will not divulge their origins. Mm -hmm. What? 
Will I have to remove you by force? I like to see you try, boy. <laughs> I have important, uh, I have important things to say to him as well. Yes, I'm sure your business with Hermes is quite pressing. You may speak with him to your heart's content after ours is concluded. I do not object to her attendance. Hermes, this is highly irregular. <laughs> Welcome Perhaps. to my life. But I believe she can be trusted. Meteon would not have taken to her so quickly otherwise. Moreover, the presence of a third party may help me to maintain composure. <sighs> As you wish, then. Be set on all sides. Behave yourself, do you hear? Don't worry about me, she says, with the biggest oh, well, face she can give. So, it's finally happened, then. Aye. Van Daniel has declared his intention to step down, and named you as his preferred successor. In recognition of your knowledge and your works, the Convocation is giving the recommendation due consideration. As one who does not know you personally, I am to use my impartial eye to take your measure. And above all else, to ascertain your disposition towards the invitation. I understand that you and Van Daniel are close. He himself was once chief overseer of Elpis, after all. I should not be surprised if you knew before anyone else that he wished to relinquish his office. I did. He told me that when he fulfilled his purpose, he wished to pass the torch to me. A torch you seem none too pleased to accept. Are you so averse to serving on the convocation? No, it's not that. For a humble researcher like myself to even be considered is an honor beyond words. No. What troubles me, what I struggle to come to terms with, is the very fact that Van Daniel is stepping down. Does this not mean that he will return to the star? Of his own volition, yes. Like so many others have before him. Return to the star? Does that mean... die? Well now, that's not a word I hear often. Is that what you say here in Elpis? Mankind is the life of a Theris. Each of us, a drop of blood flowing through its veins, bearing sustenance. In our finite time upon it, it is our duty to make it a better place that all who call it home, now and in future, may abide in happiness. To that end, we have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of enlightened creation. And by our efforts did we transform this once untamed wilderness into the peaceful paradise you enjoy today. To return to the star whence we came is a privilege afforded to we who have so loved and nurtured it a choice embraced by those who have lived their lives to the fullest, in service to our world. And when they depart upon this journey, it is beautiful, always. Maybe, but it's so tough. The Fourteen are no exception. Tis believed no occasion is more felicitous than the fulfillment of one's duty. Our office becomes our lives, and to retire is to return. Or so the majority of us hold. Some few have elected to eschew custom. Mayhap you feel Van Daniel's deeds do not warrant his return. Yet you should know his accomplishments as well as any. During his time, he conceived of countless outstanding concepts. And channeling the wealth of experience he attained here in Elpis, he brought forth many new specimens. 
I know of all this. I do. It's just... I cannot fathom why someone so great and wise, who could still do so much good, would want to end it all. Forgive me. I know I requested your presence. Might I trouble you to take Meteon outside? A change of scenery would do her good. Yeah? Jeez, I thought the final days would go. <laughs> Hermes gets sad when he thinks about death. When others are sad, I'm sad too. That's how I am. How he made me. But don't worry. I'm fine. So, why didn't you come here? You want to learn about Elphus and Hermes? Who, who? Teach you. I can teach you. We could take turns. I tell you something, and you tell me something. Sounds like fun. It will be! It will be! Uh, where to start? Ah yes, let's talk to Memnon. He should be near the Aether right. I'm not good at explaining, but Me Memnon is, so I'll have him explain instead. The baby. I am now escorting the baby. Honestly, like, <laughs> look at this! Look at the two! <laughs> it's like... This is the beta version of this. <laughs> Though you look like a person, your aether is quite thin. I assume you are familiar like Nidion. Is there something you need? This is Autumn. Could you teach her about Elpis? Ah, newly arrived familiar she. Very well. I should be glad to introduce our fair facility to her. As you know, it's mankind's duty to make the store a better place. As part of this duty, we employ creation magics to bring forth a new life. However, we cannot simply release our works into the world for it would lead to chaos. And I have to kill chaos. <laughs> no, any and all life forms must undergo extensive testing to determine their fitness to exist. Testing which is conducted here in Elpis. Every candidate is subject to rigorous study in which we identify their properties, surmise what habits, the habitats they might be suitable, and speculate as to the effects they may have on the environment and other species. Should it be judged a beneficial addition to the star, it will be allowed to take its place in the world. The two of you, too, were created with the hope of making the star a better place. So heed your masters well and be good. Do you hear? We will, then not. We will. Thanks for the lesson. You had a turn. Now I get a turn. Where did you come from? That's cheating. <laughs> from the Castarium, I guess. Castarium. I've never heard of it. But this place is important to you. I can feel it. Oh, my power! I haven't told you about it. A creation. Let's find a creation. One not being watched. Then I'll explain my power. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> also, come to Ultras. We have Big Mac extra sauce. You want less sauce? I'm sorry. <laughs> you! <laughs> This creation is perfect. But I don't remember seeing it before. Perhaps it's new. Or perhaps it chased me between a dimension and through time. Anyway, I'll try reading its mind. That's my power. I can't read it. Or maybe there's nothing to read? Wait, please wait. I'll try again. Refute this time. Okay. Okay. Hmm. 
Greetings, can you hear me? This is my power. I can read the emotions of those around me and project my emotions to others in turn. turn. I'm not actually speaking to you in your mind. Rather, you are converting my emotions into words and intentions, a process performed subconsciously by intelligence light forms. This is extremely relevant to our interests, and I should probably take you back with me. If I could. This ability is vital to my mission, for it allows me to interact with intelligent beings ever should, even should they communicate via unknown languages or other non-verbal means. As a consequence, I am clumsy at speaking. Yet though I struggle to express myself in this fashion, Hermes wants me to speak as much as possible, for everyone has thoughts and feelings that they may wish to hide. I arbor an affection for you, one that is difficult to define. Aside from the fact that you share common traits with us, your thoughts are complex, prismatic. They draw me in, and leave me wanting to know more. Out of respect for your privacy, I will refrain from using my power when speaking with you. Nevertheless, I want you to know that I wish to be your friend. Did you hear me? I want to be your friend. Now it's my turn again. So, what are you good at? Punching. Punching. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, a secret! That's something you want to hide. Just leave it to me. There, I blocked it out. I can't block everything. Not strong feelings. That wasn't too strong. Burp. Hello. <laughs> I think we might be bothering him. <laughs> Target sighted. 